Hello Libra, welcome to Higher Source Tarot. This is going to be the January 2020 reading for all Libra Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. So if you have Libra placement in your chart, you are in the right place. Thank you to all of you who have been subscribing and who have been commenting, liking, sharing, hitting the bell notification. I so appreciate that. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do and hit the bell so that you'll be notified when I post new videos. I generally post a video um, once a week for each sign for a weekly reading. Then I do a month forecast and just a couple days ago I posted videos for the year of 2020 predictions. Um, I've also posted a video about the overview of all the cards in the Rider Waite deck. So all 78 cards are explained in the video and I would suggest for anybody who's watching tarot and has some understanding but wants to understand a deeper meaning of the deck, I would suggest watching that. The deck is basically the soul represented by the fool and it's all about the fool or the soul's journey. So all of the cards, especially the major arcana cards, are representative of the lessons the fool needs to learn or the soul will learn on its journey. But know that in the end, the soul is always victorious. So if you're going through some tough times or you've been through some things and wondered why in the world did that happen, it's just part of the soul's journey and on the path to ascension. So don't give up. Um, so today we're going to do January for Libra, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. What is going to go on here for Libra? in January 2020 for Libra. Okay. All right. Now before I give you, I'm going to use the 10 card ancient spread, but before I give you that, we're going to start off with an ask and it is given card. Um, these are created by Esther and Jerry Hicks uh, and they are the teachings of Abraham, Abraham Hicks. So if you're trying to manifest or understand more about how do we manifest. Abraham is a great resource. There's many, many videos on YouTube, but there's also some really great books. Ask and It Is Given is a really helpful book. It has 22 processes in the back for how to manifest and what to do to raise your own vibration. There's also um, The Law of Attraction is another book, Into the Vortex. Money in the Law of Attraction, and then there are some other cards besides these, but I do kind of like the Ask and It Is Given cards. So this is your card to begin the reading. Very pretty card. My financial decline will not elevate the impoverished. You cannot get poor enough to help impoverished people thrive. It is only in your thriving that you have anything to offer. If you want to be of help to others, be as tapped in, tuned in, and turned on as you can possibly be. So they're talking about aligning with your source energy when they say tapped, tapped in, turned on, tuned in, turned on. That's what they're talking about. So we don't try to block energy. We try to tune in to that higher energy. You know, I never worry about attracting negative energy through tarot cards because I don't believe that can happen. I don't believe it exists, and if I don't believe it, it won't, ha it won't occur in my reality. So what you believe is what you'll get. So I just tune in and tune into the guidance that I'm being given. So here is your current situation. It is the Queen of Pentacles, and other energies influencing it are justice and the possible kind of your destiny or your goal here is the King of Cups. In the distant past, you have the King of Wands. In the more recent past, the Emperor. Ooh, upcoming energy. You do have the Three of uh, Swords here, but this is you with the Knight of Cups. Energy around you, the Two of Cups. This is quickly turning into a love reading. The Two of Swords. Interesting that you have two twos in a row. And the Ten of Pentacles. The wealth card. Um, all right, and then the bottom of the deck, I think, well, you've got two cards I'm gonna pull. Oh God, you really could have three, but um, these are the bottom three I started pulling and kept pulling because you have the hanged man, which is all about like surrender. I think of this as surrender to win. Um, and because you have the two of swords and th three of swords, I do feel like that's relevant. And if you can do that, you get the magician in the sun. So this is about manifesting and being in your own power. And then this is obviously the dividends of being able to do that. So your current situation, 
you are the queen of pentacles. So you may be a bit of a perfectionist or looking for some kind of perfection, or it's possible that you've had a situation um, or you have one that will be coming to a conclusion here quickly. And it may be due to having some, I guess, some critical energy around the relationship. But I don't, I would never tell anybody to lower their standards or lower their vibration to be a match to someone else. There is absolutely no futility in that. Just like the Abraham Hicks card, you don't help people in poverty thrive by, by giving up your own wealth. That's not how you do it. And you know, the other thing too, what I would tell you is if there's something that your heart desires that you really want in your reality, when you see it around you, notice it, appreciate it. Thank the universe if it's if it's health and fitness and you're at a gym and you can tell somebody's training for a competition and they're in phenomenal shape. You know, I always think, I hope they get more opportunities to train and their health stays good and they continue to manifest that because it shows me that it's possible. You know, if I see a Tesla on the road, um, because where I live, they're not very common, I think, hey, that, um, you know, that shows me that it's possible here to have that. I'm glad that person has you know, been able to manifest that for themselves. So I also think with this justice card, it's also going to be about you getting some things to come to fruition that you've been working on. So it's like justice will be served, but I don't feel like it's necessarily against another person. It's more like it's for you, like the things, and this is also you, by the way, Libra. So I didn't really talk about that. You've got Aries here, you've got Libra, you've got lots of water, you've got some other air, fire, and you've really got all the elements, but the main two signs are Aries and Libra. So if you've been dealing with an Aries, it's possible that that is going to be kind of coming to a conclusion or possibly coming back around if you've been dabbling with somebody else. I do feel like your overall, your desire, your goal in all of this is to Find stability, but to really get a relationship that is grounded, that is mutual, and that's just really full of love. I kind of feel like you've had some pretty flimsy offers. I also think you're interested in improving yourself. This is just really kind of like the ideal, you know, partner here. So if it's a man that you're seeking, it would be somebody who makes a great husband and father and relates well to others. They're like really good at resolving conflicts and issues. It would be the kind of person who could, you know, run a household and would know what to do. It, it would be a partnership, but they would definitely have resources. And I, I do feel like you're looking for somebody like that who's mature. This is also a very mature energy. Um, the King of Wands is mature too, but it may have been that you had somebody who was a little bit domineering in the past. And again, this could be Aries because you do have the Emperor too, um, where it wasn't completely balanced. So, and I feel like you're coming into balance with the Justice card covering you in this. Um, so I do feel like it's been, it was something where somebody had almost too much control in this situation. And it wasn't a very warm relationship. I, I don't want to say it was abusive, but I do feel like it was very controlling and um, maybe even codependent where you were doing things to please the other person, but you weren't really happy about doing them. Um, but if you didn't do them, you, you knew what kind of a mood you would get or what kind of an outcome. So um, it was kind of done in a manipulative way. So I just feel like that though is coming to an end here and there is gonna be a little bit of heartbreak Probably the beginning of January, even could have even started a little bit before that. It may have started sometime in December. We just haven't been feeling right or something's been off. Um, but I do think what's going to happen with this is you are going to get a resolution very quickly. It's possible you'll have a break and then it'll restart. And because you have two, the hanged man in here, that the time away will be well spent that there will be, each person will be investing in themselves. And if this person needs some kind of therapy, I don't feel like this is somebody with a personality disorder where they need like years of treatment and ongoing therapy. I feel like it's somebody who's, um, you know, kind of on the cusp, right? They're kind of turning that corner into 
change and it's some kind of minor things and it may, it may be something that's been a pattern that they've adopted from the past like maybe they were raised by a single parent and they had a lot of responsibility as a result and they're just not used to kind of being cared for in a partnership they're almost if they are in control they feel safe and when they don't have that control they feel out of they feel like they're unsafe or threatened in some way. That's more what I feel like it is than somebody that has truly a disorder. Um, so this is you. And I do think it will be more you um, initiating reconciliation if that's going to happen. Um, I, it, it's possible it could be the other way around, but I actually think it's going to be you. But they'll be ready. They will be ready to address that because they're also the two of cups, which again, this is also... It's equal, you know, the cups are the same size. It's like a partnership, um, a soulmate connection. So I feel like whoever this is, you know, if you are into the idea of a twin flame, that can be very off common where the twin flames separate. Although I don't see this being, typically when a twin flame separates, it's for years at a time and the one twin um, completely upends the other one. I mean, really knocks their world apart and leaves in a very dramatic way. I don't see that as being that deep of a heartbreak, even though you do have the three of swords. I see it more as a, a break that's not going to be more than a couple months um, or even less than that. You know, I had a situation where I had a breakup for six weeks and the guy came back with a ring and proposed. I see it more as this where it's kind of like, you know, especially I think with men, when they tend to be away and single, they will start to get nostalgic very quick. They'll they'll be okay for a little bit, then the nostalgia nostalgia will hit. Whereas I feel like women a lot of times are devastated right off the bat, and as time goes on, they heal. It's almost like the reverse, and I I do feel like this person is going to come back around and want a reconciliation with you. So love is on the horizon for Libra, love and contentment. But then I really like the ending here with this um, ten of, of pentacles because that's, you know, that's harmony for everyone. So you've got this as your inner emotions. I do think you have a little bit of conflict with this um, because whatever happened or will happen here, it was somewhat confusing and just not sure if you you were just sort of unsure if this was the right thing to be doing or not and as they come back around i think you're also kind of wondering is this the right direction or not so ask your higher self and your guidance but what it's telling you because my gosh then you get into all these clarifying cards and it's kind of like well of course it's the right direction of course it is so you have this Ten of Pentacles, right? And it's the conclusion of a cycle. It's wealth and happiness and harmony for everyone in the card. Okay, everyone wins with the Ten of Pentacles. Everyone wins. And then you have the Magician and the Sun. And again, this is where the Fool learns about their personal power in the Magician. And what I think could happen is if this person invested some time into understanding why they were the way they were, they will really learn and see how that affects relationships and people. And I think they're really gonna learn to step back and not feel so out of control when they're being loved and supported and nurtured. And I think for you, you know, you want to give that stability and um, encouragement and all those good things without doing it in a manipulative way, without doing it directly to get a result from someone. I think you're really gonna come a long way in this relationship. So. Um, anyway, so, but overall, the, the conclusion here with the Ten of Pentacles, if it's, if it's something else that you've been interested in, you know, like a, a, even though this is really primarily love, it's kind of hard for me to see it a different way, but if it was something more work and money related, I think a lot of the same elements or principles apply that, you know, there's some kind of a small break or shift in direction that is uncomfortable but overall you do have again um it's the wealth card it's the card of harmony and success for everyone so very nice reading for you libra thank you again for tuning in i'll be back probably next week i love you and happy new year